We'll do it this way. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> so good to see all of y'all here this morning. And I can now say, I couldn't say this at the early service, but it's past 1033 now. Happy spring. Spring rolled in about 1033 this morning, so y'all get the first greeting of spring. We're glad you're here this morning. I want you to let you know that the um, flowers on the altar here are in honor of Jason and Stephanie Berglund. Jason is our youth director or leader. Uh, Stephanie and Jason have been here in our church for almost a year now. And uh, I remember when Jason started with the youth over here uh, several months back, we had four kids in the youth, youth that night. night. Last, Last week we had 13. 13. Jason's doing, doing a great, great job, job, and I hope, I hope you all get, get to know, know them, them and welcome them into their, their church. They're a very, very vital part of our church. Our church. Um, um, Got some, Got some announcements, announcements I need, I need to go over with, with you. Uh, uh, welcome, welcome to, to our, our Facebook viewers. viewers. Uh, uh, if you, if you haven't, haven't found us on, on Facebook, we're all there. there. You can, you can uh, watch, watch the church services there. there. You, can you can find, find out announcements about, about things coming up. up. If you like, if you like the, page, the page, then, then you'll automatically get those things coming up on your page as well. So keep that in mind. Let's see. First, First off, off uh, uh, next, next week, week you can start, start bringing, bringing your plastic Easter eggs, eggs and, and candy. We're getting, we're getting close, close to that, that time. Uh, we'll, we'll have a big, big uh, Easter, Easter egg hunt for the kiddos on April, April the 10th. 10th. That'll, That'll be Palm, Palm Sunday. Sunday. So, so we, we need, need to get, to get all, all those things started, started together, together up, up, and, and we'll, we'll have an announcement a little bit later when we put all that together. Uh, on a, on a, I think it's going to be on, be on Thursday. Thursday. I'm, not I'm not sure, sure if it's going to be during the day, day or that evening, evening. But, we'll, we'll but we'll let you know later. later. Um, um, remind, remind you also that, that uh, uh, on, on April, April the 19th, 19th uh, uh, Celebrate Recovery, Recovery is going, is going to have, have our annual, annual spring, spring cleanup, cleanup day at the church. church. Uh, our CR folks will come, come up here, up here and we'll clean out clean flower beds. Somebody's, somebody's already, already trimmed, trimmed the roses, roses back for us. But we'll, clean we'll clean out flower, out flower beds, beds, replace light bulbs throughout the church. Throughout the church. Uh, really uh, get really the church, get the church to look really nice, nice and, and ready, ready for, for the Easter, Easter season. season. If you would if like, you would like to, help to help on that, on that uh, keep, uh, keep watching, watching and listening for announcements. Again, that'll be on Saturday, April the 19th. As I mentioned, Palm Sunday is coming up. That'll be on April the 10th, and it's a busy, busy day. We'll have Sunday school from 9.15 to 10.15 that morning. And, and so you're welcome to, to, to come, come on in for your regular, regular Sunday, Sunday school class. class. Then from 10.30 to 11.40, we'll have our palm processional where the kids will come down with the palm, waving the palm branches. The choir will have their cantata that Sunday as well. And then right after that, that at 10 or at 11:45, uh, the kids and the parents will exit the church and head out over here to the uh, lot next door and have their Easter egg hunt. At the same time, those of us that, that are not going to be involved in the Easter egg hunt, we will have a catered meal down in Jeter Hall. So we will exit down to Jeter Hall and start our meal. That way maybe we can get some of us through the line and eaten before all the kids and everybody come in so that it's not quite as crowded as it could be. But it'll be a great meal. Uh, it'll be a good time of fellowship. We haven't done that in quite a while. So it'll be a good time to get to see everybody again together. Um, let's see. Also coming up, um, during gusher days this year, we will be selling rose bushes again. Uh, they will be $12 a piece for knockout or the hybrid roses or three for $30. So we'll be putting out a, um, a little sheet where you can sign up for what roses you want and everything so we can pre-order some of those as well. So keep that in mind. Let's see. We don't have anybody that has ordered flowers yet for the altar for next week. If you're interested in doing that, 
uh, contact the office this week to get that set up. And uh, let's see, you've got their deal in there for um, the Easter lilies. There should be a little uh, handout in your bulletin there. Yes, the yellow one. For Easter lilies, you can go ahead and start ordering those as well. The retired teachers uh, oil patch will meet on Thursday at 1.30 up here at Jeter Hall. Uh, next week, I believe it's next week, the Kingdom Riders will be here. If you remember, uh, this is a Christian motorcycle group uh, that comes around to different churches throughout the year and explains what ministries and missions they're involved in. And they ask for uh, donations to help uh, provide the services for those. And I believe they'll be here next week. Uh, it's always good to see them. They, they bring a lot of folks with them when they come. And last Tuesday, we had our uh, food pantry out at the uh, rodeo grounds. And it was very, very successful. We had a ton of volunteers, which was great to see. But we served food to 475 families, which was outstanding. Uh, the thing is that they expect more next time because the word of mouth will make this grow. So it'll be the third Tuesday of each month out at the rodeo grounds, and that'll be April the 19th for the next one. Let's see, next Sunday, come hungry, can't eat in church, but uh, they'll be having the mission meal. They'll be serving Jay's Famous Hamburgers. Uh, they're great. If you've never had them, you got to get them. Uh, this is a mission meal. It's just $5. It's hamburger and chips and a dessert. And the money goes to help different mission uh, areas in our church that we reach out in. So uh, keep that in mind. Grab a couple for your lunches during the week and uh, come hungry. Also, we have a women's Emmaus reunion group that is going to be starting soon. If, you're in, if you've been on a walk to Emmaus and uh, you're interested in getting involved in that group, um, if you will contact Linda Lucas, she is the one that will be heading that up. Um, let's see if there's anything else on there. I don't think so. Any other announcements that I may have missed? Remind you also that uh, every Wednesday night we have our kiddos uh, across the street, the, the kids and the youth, and then uh, that's at 5.30 to 7. We, we have, have choir, choir practice, practice up here on Wednesday, Wednesday evening, evening, and then right after choir practice, practice they have handbell hand practice. On Thursday night they have uh, the uh, praise team practices. On Tuesday night we have Celebrate, celebrate recovery. recovery. There's just lots, lots going, going on at the church, church all week long. long. So try and get, get involved. involved. All right. Uh, any, any other, other announcements? announcements? Nope. nope. All right. All right, Mr. Dan, we're going to sing. Uh, God, I'm going to go.
Anything that I missed after that. Um, Joyce Hewitt's sister in law, who lives in Kilgore, we've been praying for her. Last couple of weeks, her name is Marie Wood. She passed away on Tuesday. Um, Roy Donovan is having a major oral surgery, or he's had it already. I'm not sure how all that came out. I haven't heard on it yet. Um, Whitney, who is Barbara uh, Gullett's stepdaughter uh, unspoken prayer for her Chris Bland had his neck surgery on Friday and uh, he is back home he got home yesterday and he's doing well he's got a lot of new metal in him uh, but he's doing well we went by to see him yesterday afternoon and he was laid back in his recliner enjoying all the basketball games so Chris is in good shape we're glad he's doing well uh, just pray for Meredith uh, because he's going to be home for at least four weeks with all of this. Fortunately, she goes back to school tomorrow, so Tim's going to be, be filling, filling in a lot of that for her. Um, let's see. Joanne and Carrie and her children. Um, let's see. I believe they have a lot of flu going on there. Uh, Aaron Levy had back surgery on the 17th. That's one of Billy Vines' friends. Uh, Peter Holler, a friend of Jeannie and mine, um, he had uh, intestine surgery about a week and a half ago, and he's home, and he's doing much better now, too. Uh, Baby Hudson, who had been in the hospital with a high blood count, um, and he is back home and doing well, and that's, uh, that's good news. We're so glad for that. Uh, Linda Lucas's, um, I believe it's her brother, Wes Mitchell, who lives in Georgia. He is in hospice right now. There was an um, unspoken prayer for, for Kashara Martinez, who's having some problems. Uh, Tony, who uh, is here all the time on our first service, is having neck problems as well. Um, Susie and Mike uh, Lawson, their son Blake, is having surgery on Thursday. I'm sorry. Uh, what did I say? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Lambert. Now I've got it written down. I'll blame it on the bifocals. They knew. Um, Jeff Hughes um, is in hospice. Um, this is uh, that was from Don Elrod. Uh, let's see. Who else I can see on here? I believe in. And then it's Stephanie's mom. Yes. 
Um, pray for Pastor Bud. He is uh, down south of the border. He is down in Guatemala. Uh, he had, did a wedding down there yesterday, and he's doing two church services today while he's down there. These are uh, people that, uh, that he's worked with in missions down there before. So they had a good trip down there. Just pray for a safe trip back home as well. And we want to pray for Cozy. <laughs> Cozy the calf, who had a, uh, had a really rough week, but it's doing much better, and there's some more things that need to be done, but uh, praying for Cozy. Any other prayer? Any others? I oh, guess. I did not know that. Now, Logan is in the Air Force and uh, did his all his pre stuff here in, in uh, Texas, and then he went to England, I believe, and now they've uh, they're moving him to Poland. So. Uh, prayers, prayers for that, that situation, situation over there as well. As well. Uh, so, so much going on over there. Uh, you know, you've always heard the saying, history repeats itself. And it seems like we're seeing that again. So just prayers for, for everybody involved over there. Thank you for that information. Yes, ma'am. Any other, other joys? Uh, prayers for me, please. Um, I turned another speed limit this week. Uh, hit that 70 mark this week. So uh, prayers for Jean too. She's at home this morning. A real bad cough from all the sinus and everything that's going on there. So, all right. Any other prayers? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you've heard our hearts this morning. You know where we're coming from. You've heard the pleas for those who are ill, those who are having surgery, Father, those who've been placed in hospice, for those who've gone home, Lord. Um, there's joy in heaven for that. Father, we uh, pray for Pastor Bud and, and uh, Debbie as, as uh, they come back this week. Uh, just, just pray, pray for, for safe, safe travel for them. them. Pray, pray for your anointing on him today, today as he preaches, preaches the word. Um, Father, we thank, thank you for the many uh, ministries that are involved in this church. church. Uh, we, we thank, thank you for your provision, provision for those, those Lord. Lord. As, 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 as we move, move forward, forward and reach, reach out to make, make disciples of others, of others in, our in our community and in, in our, our own church. church. Father God, God, we know as disciples that we are to, to be, be like, like Jesus. Jesus. And so, so Lord, Lord, we know, we know the, story, the story, the parable of the, the 99 and the one, one that, that Jesus, Jesus left, left the 99, 99 to, go to go get the one lost sheep. Lost sheep. And as, 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 as we, we are disciples and try, try to be Christ-like, Christ -like, Lord, Lord, it becomes, it becomes our, our responsibility to go, go after, after that, that one. one. And so, so Lord, give us strength, give us wisdom. Uh, Lord, Lord, lead, lead us, us to where, where you need us to be. To be. All, these All these things we pray, pray in the powerful, powerful and healing name, name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ who taught, who taught us, us to pray. pray. Our, Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will, thy will be, done be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. And this is this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou hast kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen.
know we're blessed in this church to have uh, a lot of talent uh, in a lot of different areas. Uh, people that step up and do so many things behind the scenes. And our church uh, continues to grow. And we have been blessed uh, with two people that bring a lot to our church. And I don't know if you've even met them yet. It's a shame if you haven't because they've been here almost a year now. But like I said, Jason leads our youth. Uh, he just got back from confirmation camp with Will Boudreaux and Meredith Bland and uh, taking our kids to learn more about our church and preparing them for membership and work in our church. And we appreciate that so much. And his wife, Stephanie, is here as well. Uh, she's had a lot of things going on in her life with her mom. She has a three-year-old son. But I wanted you to know a little bit more about Stephanie this morning before she speaks. She is a, um, she is a BSF girl. How many of y'all have done BSF before? Bible Study Fellowship? Yeah. So you'll enjoy this. She, is, she also helps teach BSF. Uh, she's done that before. Um, Jason and Stephanie will be married 12 years in June, and they have a little son. His name is Grayson, and he is three years old. Uh, Stephanie also is a graduate of Letourneau University. She got her Bachelor of Arts there in Bible study, or Biblical Studies and also a minor in Christian Ministries. So we welcome uh, Stephanie this morning as she brings a message to us. so much for the introduction and I I don't recognize everyone's faces or I do recognize faces but I don't know everyone's names so I apologize about that I've been in and out with my son this last year he's had a lot of sickness and then also I've had to keep him home because I travel to see my mom who has uh, terminal cancer and so we have to stay healthy in order to be around her so um, but yes we've had lots going on this year and the Lord has been faithful to clear my schedule in order to be able to be with you this morning and so I told the first service um, you're gonna have to bear with me because I am a BSF girl I give a lot of context and I read from a script so I'm not gonna be around here dancing around or anything like that but um, but I, I hope that you hear from the Lord today uh, last week, Pastor Bud mentioned that we are in a season of Lent, and this is a time before Jesus heads to the cross, which is ultimately, you know, the grave and then resurrection on, on Easter Sunday. And so this is a season that has us thinking about God's amazing love for us. And so in this series, God, um, Bud has entitled it, God's Amazing Love. And last week, he reflected on Matthew chapter 7, if you'll remember that. He expounded on what a life built on the rock looks like for us and who or what is the rock Jesus, Jesus that's right thank you uh, but encourage us as followers of Christ to step forward in two areas anyone remember what those two areas were the, the hearing, hearing of, of God's, God's word, word and the, the doing of God's, God's word and I want to take a minute and pause right, right here because, because um, in, in our, our English, English version of the word, word to hear something, something we kind of think of it as a passive, passive Verb, where, where we, we sit and we listen, listen and we kind of close, close our mouth, mouth a little bit and, and we think, think of it something. But, but really, really in its original context, the intellectual ascent, the closing your mouth and thinking about it, is connected directly with the doing part. There's an action part to that word. And those two things can't really be separated, although it's easier for us to think of them in a different context. So when I ask my son, son, are you listening to me? I'm actually expecting that not only is he hearing me, I'll know he is hearing me when he says, yes, ma'am, and does the thing. So um, this word really helps us to embody and to listen to the word and to become the word that we hear. And in that, we can show that by how we act out our life. Um, as disciples of Christ. So I want you to keep that verb in mind and what that means in its original context as we head into today, today's scripture. And I'm going to continue on with a little bit more of context um, in the book of Luke before we get into our scripture reading for the day. Um, 
so I digress a little bit, but Bud then encouraged us to do something different in the hearing of God's word, whether that was to listen to a 20 minute Andy Stanley podcast or a two hour Bruce Wilkinson study. I want to know who the two hour people are out there. Anyone? <laughs> That's all right. Then he, but if you do ever get to read his books, they're really great. Just a side note. Then he said you should pray about how the Lord would guide you in the doing part. He didn't want to influence you on what it might look like. Instead, he prayed that the Holy Spirit would guide you into what you're doing looks like. And if you're stuck in the hearing, I know I get stuck in hearing from the Lord at times um, on that part. If you're stuck in that part, this week I have prayed for you. And I'm praying that this week's reading and teaching of the scripture will stir you or even prompt you to know for certain what that doing looks like for your life. And so this week we will turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 15, and verses 1 through 7 for the hearing of our word. And like I said, I'm going to go ahead and give you some context first. And so our passage today is the parable of the lost sheep, and it's connected to the parable of the lost coin and the lost son. And I see, um, according to our bulletin, Pastor Bud will be preaching on the prodigal son in um, the following verses next week. So you get to hear a little bit about that. And, and so, so these uh, three parables uh, fall into part four of Luke's gospel. And then this section comes directly after Jesus' Galilean ministry. And during his Galilean ministry, Luke establishes uh, Jesus' authoritative nature through his teaching. He establishes his authority over the synagogue. He places judgments against the Jewish rulers. He also gives signs and miracles and compassionate hearings in his Galilean ministry. And up to this point, everyone was trying to discover the meaning of these things. And in particular, they were really curious to know who was this Jesus? What was his true identity? And yet we know from Scripture that Jesus, his identity, was hidden from those who were hypocrites, idolater, idolaters, and prideful rulers. And only his true disciples knew his true identity and had insight into the teaching on the new way of his kingdom rule and kingdom life. And so in the beginning of the, se of, of the section, Luke ends with Peter's confession that Jesus is the Messiah. He is the one that they had been waiting for. And so once his authority and identity is established as the Messiah, we see that Luke begins to paint for us a picture of what that means exactly. And in Luke 9, 51, it states, As a time approached for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, which is his crucifixion and his resurrection, Jesus resolutely set his eyes on Jerusalem. And you see, Jesus fixed his eyes on what he was sent to do. Setting out for Jerusalem meant he was on the way to the cross, his death. And he set his eyes on Jerusalem as he set out on the road to the cross. These teachings in our sessions uh, begin to highlight God's amazing love for us. And as we read this section of scripture, we begin to realize the way to righteousness, that the way to the heart of God is completely radical. Luke demonstrates to us in Jesus' teachings that there is a cost to follow Jesus. He focuses on topics like losing one's life, redefining who our neighbor is, and also how to be a good neighbor. He teaches us about prayer and the power of the Spirit, and how not to pray with many words like the Pharisees. He teaches us how to be good stewards of the things God has given us. He teaches us to serve only one master, and how to be a blessing to the poor and the outcast. And we see in the writings of Luke a harsh rebuke and criticism of the Pharisees and the Sadducees, for being outwardly holy, but inwardly filthy. And in some of these teachings paint a much different picture than life under the law. It paints a countercultural picture of kingdom life. For God's kingdom is marked by God's amazing love, by the way of the cross, which I am just titling, The Journey to Jerusalem is the Way of the Cross. It is marked by servanthood, by humility, wisdom, and sacrificial love. And it's the pursuit of his beloved ones. In Luke's depiction of the Messiah, we see a God who pursues those who have been marginalized, who have been outcast, the sick and the hurting. We see an amazing love on display as the words of Jesus in Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 are realized when he says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me 
because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for prisoners and recovery of the sight for the blind, to release the oppressed and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so with these things in mind, with this picture in mind of what the Messiah looks like and what he came to do, let's turn to our scripture reading for the day, which is in chapter 15, verses 1 through 7 in the Gospel of Luke. And I read from the NIV, so I'm, I think it's going to be the NIV up there. Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathering around to hear him, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls all his friends and his neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over the one sinner who repents than over the 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. And may God bless the reading of his word. Okay, so remember when I said that Jesus set his eyes on Jerusalem? Well, it, when you read those verses, the next part, it tells us that he sent out his disciples ahead of him from town to town to see who was going to receive him, to make, make ready a people, right? To see, will they receive me there with hospitality? And he set out for, uh, in pursuit for anyone who wanted to hear and accept the good news. He set out to gather a flock for his father, and when he found a town unreceptive, he went to the next one. He wasn't stopping until he had pursued anyone who was ready to hear the good news. And so here in these first two verses of our scripture today, we have two different sets of audiences. First, we have the tax collectors and the sinners, and then we have the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. And I want you to take note, who gathered around here to hear him? Thank you, tax collectors. Someone's listening in the front. <laughs> It was in the sinners, right? And who was merely there to accuse and trap Jesus and to grumble at the fact that he was not following the law? There we go. And of course, we see um, the Pharisees' main complaint here is that this man, this man Jesus, he's welcoming and eating with sinners. So that's the complaint. And all throughout Luke's gospel so far, this has been uh, the main complaint from the teachers of the law. That Jesus is dining with the wrong crowd. This was a deep held belief that if you dined with the wrong crowd and you broke bread with them, it would make yourself ceremonially unclean. Well, what does that mean, to be unclean? Why does it matter? Well, to be unclean, you would be prevented from entering into the presence of God. And you would also be kept from, um, you would be outcast from the rest of society. And, and so, so if you were unclean, unclean you, you couldn't draw near, near to the Lord. Lord. You, you couldn't have, have your sins forgiven. You, you couldn't um, be, be, be washed and made new in, in order, order to enter, enter the, presence. the presence. And so, and so I, don't I don't have a lot of time, time today to expound on that, that but please, please note, note this is a very serious accusation. Uh, one, uh, one of which a lot of commentators say they taught the charts for why Jesus was actually sent to the cross. And so in response to this complaint, Jesus, Jesus uses this, this story or this parable, parable to get to, get to the, the heart of why, of why he, he is doing, doing what he is doing. doing. Now, now, I told, I told the, the um, first service, service sometimes, sometimes parables can be interpreted, can be interpreted in, several in several different ways and have different focus, focus points, points and everything. And everything. But, today but today I've chosen, chosen to, really to really focus in on, on why, was why was he dining, dining with, with the sinners, the sinners and, the and the tax collectors. That's going to be the main thrust for today. And so, and though, so there though there was a strong rebuke against, against the Pharisees, the Pharisees in, this parable, in this parable, Jesus is Jesus mainly, mainly pointing, pointing out the why, out the why of his, actions. his actions. He's pointing, He's to, pointing the to the counter-cultural counter -cultural thinking, thinking and teaching, teaching that he was that setting, he was into, setting motion into motion in his ministry, ministry and what he was, what about, he was about to do. And so in verse 4, he told them this story. And he invites his audience to imagine for themselves that they are the, the shepherd that has lost a precious sheep. And I'm going to do a little another side note here. I've been thinking a lot about why would Jesus ask these guys to imagine that they were a shepherd? It sounds great to us, but we know from Bud's teaching over the last several months that 
People despised the shepherds. They were the lowest on the totem pole. You know, um, they were almost outcasted in many ways from, from society. And so, but as I was, you know, thinking through the scripture and, and reading this week, I found that in the book of Jeremiah, God himself said that he would be the shepherd for Israel. And, and that, that he himself, himself would become, become the shepherd and gather to himself his, his scattered uh, flock. So he referred him to himself as the shepherd. And then in the New Testament, we know that Jesus referred to himself as the good shepherd. He would ultimately be the one who would regather his scattered flock for God the Father. But here in our parable, he was, he was inviting us, us and, and, and the, the Pharisees, Pharisees and everyone, everyone who was listening to imagine themselves or ourselves, or ourselves as, as the ones who... who are seeking after a precious lost object. He's inviting us to imagine what a shepherd might do when one of his own goes missing. He asks, wouldn't you chase after that sheep in fear that they, may, they might be lost forever or eaten by a wild animal or hurt or maybe they're even just in distress? His question, would you not leave the 99? It begs the answer, of course I would. I would leave the 99. So in verse 5, he goes on to say, when it is found, or excuse me, when it, it is found, you joyfully put him on your shoulders. The response of the shepherd, you see, is not that he's going to scold the sheep or get mad or try to tug him along back home. No, he's not scolding them or rebuking the sheep. He is joyfully taking this heavy animal and putting him on his shoulders and returning him back to the flock. It is a joyful response. It's totally different from what we might do when we are um, finding something that's, that's lost. It's, it's a cherished celebration. And then he even has a party to celebrate. It's a homecoming of the recovered. And so in, in verse 7, Jesus explains the connection of the parable to the original issue, which was his dining with the wrong people. That was the issue, right? The response then is that heaven rejoices in one sinner coming to repentance over the 99 righteous persons who don't need to repent. There's a few different ways to uh, view who were the 99. Are those um, just, you know, righteous, you know, religious people, or were they already the flock that's been gathered together? A lot of commentators suggest that it's referring to the ones who are already gathered together. They're already God's people. And so they don't necessarily have a need to um, repent. So the one is a joyous occasion because he's going to be brought into the fold. And so the reason Jesus dines with the unclean, the reason Jesus dines with those who are seen as unrighteous, the reason Jesus dines with the sinners and those who are hated most by society is a radical display of a love pursuit. He lovingly pursues those who need him the most. He was doing what God's people should have been doing. He was bringing good news of redemption for those who otherwise were without hope. He came near to them so that those who were deemed unclean could have an opportunity to hear the good news that they were being redeemed to God. He drew near so that Luke chapter 4 verses 18 to 19 would be fulfilled. The sick were being cared for. The widow and the orphan were not forgotten. I think we sang about that earlier today. He was, he was doing, doing what, what the law failed to do. He was doing what only God could do. He was closing the gap between man and God. The gap that was created when sin entered into the world. He was finally fixing the problem found in Genesis. In Genesis, this Bible right here, Adam and Eve, they sinned. They were separated from God. And then in this story, what we hear is the story about how God himself would pursue man in a loving relationship so that they could finally stand in his presence once again and have a relationship once again. That relationship would be restored. And so Jesus closes that gap for us through a pursuit of us. And, and the, the parable, parable still holds power today. It's, it's like he's still asking us, his disciples, what would you do to bring a lost sheep back into the fold? Would you leave the comfort of your home? Would you risk your life for the sake of one? Would you invite people to dine with you for the sake of the gospel? What would you do for the lost? I'm not talking about humanitarian stuff here. 
I think there are many people doing great humanitarian work in the world and even in this community, in this church, you guys do an awesome thing. But I'm talking about sharing the good news to those who need it most. Anyone can do humanitarian work, but it's only God's people that can show others the love of God. Only God's people can bring truth to a dying world. I'm talking about risking it all, getting your hands dirty. Maybe it looks like offering a tender hand to someone who may look unclean. I'm talking about extending God's loving kindness to the people you don't want to associate with. Would you be willing to share with others that righteousness is an invitation to dine with Jesus and to accept that invitation by repentance? For Jesus, dining with the sinners was a radical pursuit of those God has called called back back to himself. himself. And And I think think that is still really radical today. So in continuing with Bud's question from last week, if you'll remember, I offered that same question to you. What would you do? Who are you eating with? Who are you inviting to your table to share a meal with? When When was was the last last time you asked asked someone over for dinner dinner and extended a hand of hospitality and showed them the love of Christ? And so finally, the last part of the scripture states that the heavenly response to finding the one is rejoicing. There's a heavenly party, and what a huge contrast that is to the grumbling accusations of the Pharisees. And so, you know, like I'm a, you know, you said that I'm a BSF girl, and like any good BSF girl, we have principles. When we, when we read our scripture, we get these little tr- truths that stand out. And so my principle that I gathered from this week's study is that Pursuit of the lost is at the heart of God's joy. And you should write that down. I'll repeat it again. (laughs) Remember it. Pursuit of the lost is at the heart of God's joy. And guess what? We're invited to that party. We're invited to dine with God himself in the search and rescue extravaganza. It's going to be huge. It's going to be the best party you ever go to. The best, the best dinner, dinner party. They serve the best food with, with the most awesome people ever and God, God himself. And, and so, so not, not only that, that though, he is also inviting us into the, the doing part. part. We're invited to the running radically after the lost and helping with the search and rescue party. party. And, so and so in closing, I'm going to leave you with a little, little bit of my testimony, testimony not, not too much, much of it, of it though. though. Um, so bear with me. But it was 11 years ago that the Lord, that the Lord presented, presented himself, himself to me as, to me my, as shepherd. my shepherd. And so this, and so scripture, this scripture is, is, really, is personal. really personal. It's home. It's home. He showed, he me, showed me that I was living, that I was the, living prior the prior 10 years of my life in the pits of despair. And I'll never and I'll forget, never forget it. it. I was listening, I was listening to, to a Charles Stanley, Stanley on, on, on video on, video on TV. TV. My cousin, my cousin saved it for me that day. She's like, you got to hear this. I was like, okay. okay. But he was preaching about the good shepherd. And it was, and it like, was in like an instant, instant, in a vision, in a vision the, Lord the Lord showed me my, showed me my life. And there I was, there crying, I was crying, I was in a deep, I was in a deep valley, and valley in a pit. In a pit. And when I heard and him when I calling, him my, calling name, my name, he said, Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie. Stephanie. And I looked and up, I looked and there was tears, tears in my eyes, I was having a fit, having a fit crying, you know. Crying, you know. And, there and there was Jesus, my shepherd, smiling down at, down at me. And he was offering me his hand, and he asked me, are you ready? And in that moment, I knew I was safe in the arms of God. I locked eyes on I locked Jesus, eyes on and, that Jesus and that was the best, day of, best day of my life. The moment that I the accepted, that his I accepted hand, his I tell you what, my tell life you what, has my been life radically has been changed radically because, changed because, loving because of the loving pursuit of Jesus. Of Jesus. And I've been radically and I've been changed. Radically changed. He, stepped into he stepped the pit into with the pit with me and offered me a way out. Me a way out. And yes, I know and myself. Yes, I know my salvation. My salvation is secure. But I know that but he I still, know that he pursues, still me pursues me right now, now, right on, this now on this journey. I follow his steps, I follow and, his I steps and I try day to every take day my to cross. take up my cross. I live a life I live that declares, a life that with, declares Jesus, with Jesus, Jesus my, eyes, I fix on my eyes on Jerusalem. It's not easy. It's not easy. And my husband will tell you I cuss a little bit. <laughs> but the journey is worth it. And Jesus pursued me when I was in the pit. So I live my life in pursuit of the best relationship that's on offer to us today, and that's the one that we have with Jesus Christ, our Good Shepherd. So I can't wrap up today without saying that Jesus is also reaching out to you today. He is pursuing you today. In this moment, he's calling you by name to take his hand. No matter what stage of life you are in and no matter where you are in your journey with God, he is chasing after you like a shepherd does a lost sheep. And he will joyfully put you on his shoulders. 
He's not going to rebuke you or condemn you for where you've been or what you've been doing or not doing. He's going to put you on his shoulders and he's going to bring you back into the fold. And the good shepherd is calling your name. Maybe it's for the first time or maybe it's for the hundredth time. If you were seven, seven or eight or, eight or 12, twelve, I know we, we have, have some young, young ones, but we also have some, have some um, wiser, wiser ages, ages as well. well. Eighty-two, upward, upward seventy. 70. There, you there you go. go. Whatever, Whatever age, age, God is saying, saying come, come near to me. me. Come. Or maybe, or maybe you already, already know the Lord, and He's, he's asking, asking you to draw, to draw near, near to Him once, once more, more in, in order, order to set your life ablaze for Him once again. He's calling you as well. He's pursuing you too. He has, he has a, plan a plan for your, for your life, life, and that includes going, going after, after more, more lost sheep. sheep. So I'll so ask, ask you what I asked you last week. week. What, does what does your doing, doing look like? like? Will you, Will you step, step out in faith, faith and do something, something different, different, even, even risky, risky and sacrificial? Would, Would you, you not, not leave the 99 to go after the 1? What, what does, does that, that look like for you? you? Let's, Let's pray. pray. Heavenly Father, I just give you... Thanks for your word to us, Lord, that you have shown us that you are the good shepherd who closes the gap, who carries us on your shoulders, Father. I pray that each one of us today, as we've heard your word, Lord, that something stirs inside of us, whether it's new or, or something that you're just repeating again, Father. I pray that we will hear what you are saying, that we will hear your voice, and we will follow you wherever you are asking us to go. Thank you for your salvation, Lord, that you bring to us. And thank you for getting us out of the pit of despair and bringing us back into your loving arms, Lord. What an amazing love is, Lord, with your grace that comes in abundance, Father, and your mercy that's new every single day. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings, and that was a perfect hymn for closing, to chase after the lost. And will you tell them about Jesus? And so Bud always asks you to look around the room to see the family of God. But also today, I want to take note of there's some people in your mind that you wish were here that aren't yet a part of our family. And not necessarily this church, but I'm talking the big, big C, big church. Would you this week keep those in mind and, and pray for them? And so um, we're going to part with these these blessings here in the benediction. Who are we? We are God's family. We have come to worship the Lord and to give Him praise. Now we accept our God and the glory of the disciples of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the way you love us. We ask you not to leave us by your own spirit. In Jesus' name, Amen. Go in peace. Mm -hmm.